All right, so maybe this is a, a good time to start up. So welcome everyone once again to the Western Hemisphere Colloquium in Geometry and Physics. Uh, um, so today's talk uh, is by Hee Yun Kim from Rutgers uh, on path integral derivations of k-theoretic Donaldson invariants. And during the talk, please just feel free to you know, shout out your questions if, uh, as you have them. The talk is an hour and then there'll be um, some time about 15 minutes at the end for questions then as well. Uh, so yeah, we're delighted to have Hee Yun here. Uh, take it away. Um, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, the invitation to speak uh, here at uh, Wonderful Seminar Series. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, an upcoming work with my collaborators, Jan Manscott, Greg Moore, Yiron Kai Tao, and Xin Yu Zhang, uh, which is about computing some observables in five dimensional supersymmetric uh, gauge theories. Okay. So, let me start from some motivations. Um, so in the last couple of decades, five-dimensional supersymmetry uh, gauge theories have been uh, studied, um, especially in the, uh, the context of the studying the interaction between the geometry and physics. The reason that they are interested in, uh, they, are, uh, they are interested is um, uh, the series can be obtained by geometric engineering of M-theory on local Calabria report. Um, in general, 5D, uh, uh, super, uh, 5D gauge theories are perturbatively non minimalizable, but the string theory predicts that uh, there exists a class of a five dimensional supersymmetric gauge theories that admits a UV completion with 5D or 6D superconformal field theories. And also, uh, these theories provide a very important um, uh, tool to study. Uh, the six dimensional Lagrangian or non Lagrangian quantum, uh, quantum field series or three or four dimensional uh, quantum field series by uh, color decline reductions. Um, there are uh, various ways to study those five dimensional supersymmetry gauge series, but uh, one of the key tools have been uh, various exact computations of partition functions or uh, supersymmetry indices defined on a compact spaces such as uh, S5 or uh, on S4 times S1 or uh, even EC2 times S1 with some omega deformation on it. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to uh, discuss certain correlators in 5D n equals one pure SU2 gauge theory defined on a five manifold of type M4 times S1 uh, with a topological twist on four manifold M4 when M4 is a smooth closed uh, four manifold. So uh, the correlators that I'm going to discuss can be written in the following way. Uh, as an infinite dimensional pass integral uh, of this gauge theory, possibly with insertions of various operators. For example, you could consider some recent loop operators along this S1, which sits at a point X1 on M4. Or you could also consider some extended operators uh, for example, uh, wrapping some cycles uh, in uh, higher dimensional cycles in M4. Uh, mathematically, this quantity can be identified with uh, what is called the k-theoretic version of the bonus invariants on four manifold M4, which can be schematically written in the following form. So there are lots of notations going on, but uh, I'm going to explain uh, one by one uh, as we proceed. But this is roughly speaking, uh, is a generating function uh, of the integral over the moduli space of instantons on M4 that I will going to denote by the curly M, where the integrand you have, uh, in the integrand you have the A hat genus uh, of the moduli space of instanton, possibly multiplied uh, with um, some characteristic classes associated with some element in a uh, homologic class like X, X or S, uh, that depends on your choice, which is going to be um, uh, identified with the insertion uh, of the, the operators, uh, like the recent line or some uh, extended operators in the physics side. Okay. So in some sense, this formula can be thought of as a natural 4D analog of the Bollinger formula. Uh, and the goal of this talk is going to be uh, the twofold. The first one, uh, the first of all, to, to first of all, uh, establish the precise relation between these two expressions and also to provide the precise physical derivation of this quantity. Um, 
This quantity, the K-theoretic promotion invariance, have been considered in various physical and also mathematical contexts. Uh, probably the first uh, uh, one uh, is the by the the work of Nekrasov and also the Losef Nekrasov and Svatashvili in late uh, 90s, which uh, where this uh, quantity is studied in the uh, context of the K theoretic instanton partition function and also uh, in terms of the toric localization um, in, case, in the case where M4 is a toric uh, manifold. Um, and what's going to be most relevant for us is uh, this paper by Getsha Nakajima Yoshioka in 2006, where they first uh, derived the work causing formula uh, in the case where M4 is algebraic toric surfaces. More recently, this work has been um, uh, extended uh, in this paper uh, to a more general class of uh, algebraic surfaces. And also in physics perspective, this quantity has been considered in the context of the holography, uh, which calculates the entropy of certain uh, 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 the black cores in supergravity setting. Uh, despite all this development, however, a uh, complete test integral derivation in terms of the 5D supersymmetry gauge theory uh, has not appeared in the literature. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to provide uh, two different physical ways of computing uh, this observables uh, with an aim to reproduce and generalize uh, the research of these two papers uh, here. So the first of our, the, uh, the first approach is uh, via so-called the U-plane integral analysis, which can be thought of as the U-plane integral uh, approach of uh, Moore and Witten in late 90s, which first provided the physical derivation of uh, the, the original homological version of the donuts in Berlin. Um, the advantage of this approach is that this approach is really powerful in the sense that uh, this approach uh, can be applicable for the general class of the four manifold and four. But in this talk, we are going to focus on the case where P2 plus is positive and P1 of four manifold this two. Uh, and the second approach is uh, from the perspective of the instanton counting of the SE2 gauge theory. Um, um, this approach is uh, actually something that is adopted by most of uh, this previous work, probably except for this one here. So this, this approach it has to be uh, restricted to the case where the M4 is a toric four manifold, but it has an advantage uh, that the, it is useful in understanding some geometric interpretation of the Fischer function uh, by the reduction to the supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So I'm going to derive the uh, derivation in these two uh, different perspectives. And in particular, I'm going to focus on the case where P2 plus is equal to one uh, today. In this case, uh, you, can, you can argue that the partition function is not really a topological invariant, but it depends on a metric uh, so that the partition function are expected to jump as you cross uh, those words uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the space of metrics on, on M4. Okay. And one of the goals of today's talk is to derive the work crossing formula in these two approaches that I just described and show that uh, they agree in a non trivial way. And also, I'm going to uh, comment briefly on the case we speak to a plus uh, larger than one case. Is there any questions so far? Okay, so if not, I'm going to um, discuss um, some basic aspects of 5D n equals 1 uh, SE2 gauge theory, which is going to be uh, important in our later discussion. So let me first describe the 5 n equals to n equals to one as you do gauge theory on a, on a flat space, which is uh, described by one uh, a 5 n equals one uh, factor multiplet, where which we can uh, write uh, in a following way. In particular, the sigma is a real constant valued in um, uh, adjoint um, representation of the gauge group as you two, where you can write down the supersymmetric yang min section uh, as usual in a following way. So what's going to be most important for us is the global symmetry group that the theory enjoys, which is the SU2R times U1I, where this SU2R is the usual R symmetry group, and the U1I uh, is the, uh, the flavor symmetry that is present in any 5D gauge theory, 
which is associated to this topological current, which can be written in the following way, whose charged particles are instanton particles. Okay. So in particular, the gauge coupling constant that I wrote here can be thought of as the vacuum expectation value of the scalar field in the background vector multiply for this U1i symmetry with uh, the identification uh, you know, in the following way. And we can also consider a mixed trans Simon stump between the gauge group SU2 and this U1i uh, the flavor symmetry, which can be uh, roughly written in the following way, which can be uh, supersymmetry completed with the following uh, the additional terms. And if you look at the second line here, this uh, expression in the uh, square bracket is precisely the uh, Lagrangian for the young mass action. And with the identification that I just uh, mentioned here, you can uh, consider this young mass action as a part of the supersymmetrized, uh, uh, the mixed trans Simons action. And this point of view uh, will uh, be very useful in our later discussion. And now we want to put the theory on a curved five dimensional manifold of type M4 times S1. It's a topological twist on M4. So this is the, uh, how the topological twisting is done. As usual, this is the uh, rotation group on M4. And we are going to take a diagonal uh, subgroup of the SU2 plus and SU2R and define SU2 uh, uh, prime as a diagonal subgroup of these two and we uh, declare that this is our new rotation group of M4. Okay. And this procedure gives you a BRSD supercharged Q bar, which uh, under which the, the field transform in the following way, uh, which squares to uh, the, uh, the, the translation in the, in the S1 direction. This procedure gives you a partial topological uh, theory on M4 times S1. And in particular, this topological reduction on a four manifold gives rise to the 1D supersymmetry quantum mechanics on uh, S1 in the remaining direction with one supercharge uh, the Q bar. Okay. So the question here is that what uh, is the partition function of this twisted theory computes? So in order to answer this question, we uh, go back to the, the QPix point equation. And you can show that uh, this cubic equation uh, tells us that the A is an anti sapphire connection on M4, satisfies this equation. And then the effective supersymmetric quantum mechanics on S1 is nothing but the 1D N equals 1 sigma model into the moduli space of instant on M4, which can be written uh, as uh, like this, as a this joint union of M mu uh, comma N where n is uh, the instant numbers uh, of the anti sapphire connections. And we also specify mu, which is the, the choice of the second stupid fitting class of the principal SU2 bundle on M4. Does n equals one here mean there's one supersymmetry or two? One supersymmetry. Okay. Yeah. And do we know if that moduli space is spin? Uh, we don't know. We don't know whether uh, this uh, moduli sp space is space is spin or not. So, yeah, as I will, I, I was just going to say that the Hilbert space uh, of this quantum mechanics is in fact uh, something that can be identified with the space of sections of spin bundle on M mu. But if the moduli space is not not spin, then the 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 observable that we are going to uh, discuss today is not going to be well defined over an integer. But um, we can still compute something, but you will get some rational values uh, as, a, as a result of the computation. So the Hilbert space can be decomposed into uh, the following way, uh, which is created by the instanton number here. And by the standard argument, the topologically twisted partition function defined on M4 times S1 can be identified with the written index of the quantum mechanics defined on S1 that I just described. So this is the generating function of the written index, where R is the uh, some quantity that keeps track of the instant number n that I'm going to uh, define physically uh, in a later slide. And here you compute the trace of the Hilbert space that I just mentioned, which is created by uh, the Fermion numbers as usual. 
Uh, and from this then that uh, argument of the n equals one supersymmetric quantum mechanics, the written index can be written as an intersection integral over uh, the moduli space of mu. It can be uh, roughly speaking, a thought of as a generating function of the integral over the moduli space, where in the integrand you have uh, the a hat genus of the, the moduli space. Uh, now you can consider various different uh, observables in this theory. The one of the most fundamental class of observable is this Wilson loop uh, along S1 that sits at a point X on M4. And you can also consider some topological descent of Wilson loop that will generate some extended operators on M4 that still uh, wraps the S1 direction. And an interesting class of example of the observable, extended observable, is uh, actually the 3D transimers like defect on S1 times S, which is a co-dimension two locus in, uh, in, the, in our five dimensional uh, manifold, where S is some uh, element in the second homology group of M4. Uh, what's interesting is that the mixed transimers, uh, the action that we just introduced in the beginning of the talk, can be thought of as realizing this transimers like defect. If you think about the fact that uh, this, the, the FI is some closed uh, two form that realizes the flux for this U1I symmetry that I uh, introduced uh, in the beginning, you can think of this as a front card dual of the S1 times S, which is some co dimension two locus where you define your 3D transforms like here. And in addition to that, you can also consider coupling to other 3D topological uh, field theories. For example, you can consider coupling some topologically twisted 3D n equals to four um, theory uh, that possibly has some uh, SU2 uh, global symmetry so that you can gauge it uh, quickly to, to couple the theory to the five. But in today's talk, we are going to focus on these two uh, uh, type of the observables. The first one, the reason that along the S1 and the, the 3D transimers like defect and try to argue uh, what uh, the first integral with uh, insertion of those observable compute geometrically. So let's first consider the 3D transimers like defect, which can be realized uh, as the, uh, the mixed transimers term or like this. Uh, uh, this term, this mixed transimers term uh, can be uh, uh, the, the the uh, classified uh, with the choice of the, the background value for the flux for fi, which will we will denote by this ni, which is going to be an element in a second cohomology uh, class of uh, M4. And uh, the choice of ni can be thought of as a choice of line bundle i on M4. Whose, chun, whose first chun class is given by uh, an i. Okay. And I'm going to argue that such a choice of line bundle on Li induces a uh, line bundle on the moduli space. Okay. I, this is going to be done by the universal construction. Uh, so let's uh, say that that uh, is the coordinate on the moduli space m mu comma n. And you can argue that just by direct uh, reduction of this uh, mixed transformer term along M4, you can show that this term induces the following coupling in the effective quantum mechanics. Okay. Here, this A tilde is nothing but the connection on some line bundle that I will denote by curly Li on the moduli space, uh, whose curvature can be written in the following way. Okay. So here, this board phase F, uh, is nothing but the curvature of the universal bundle E, which is defined on the product of the moduli space times M4. Okay. Uh, on the other end, in the presence of this coupling, the Hilbert space of our quantum mechanics is now the space of sections of not just spin bundle, but spin bundle uh, multiplied by this new line bundle Li on the moduli space. And again, by the standard argument, the addition of this um, 3D transimers like defect uh, multiplies this additional factors of exponential of C1 of uh, this new line. Okay. So one re remark here is that uh, this expression that I just uh, introduced as a curvature of uh, this line bundle can be thought of as a donor map. 
Mu from uh, the second uh, homology class of M4 to the second homology class of the moduli space, evaluated at certain four dimension two log plus ASS, which is nothing but the Poincare drawer of this, uh, this, this line. Okay. So this implies that we can also interpret this insertion as an insertion of exponential of the bonus mu map evaluated um, at the surface S. We can also consider uh, an insertion of the Wilson loop at a point, uh, which can be written in the following way. And by the similar argument, you can argue that this leads to the insertion of the, the Chun character in representation R evaluated at a point X where you insert your Wilson loop. And to summarize, um, you can uh, argue, we just argue that the partition function is some insertion of the Wilson loop or the uh, Chan Simons operator, Chan Simons uh, extended operator on some surface S can be uh, written in the following way, which is the generating function of the integral of the, over the moduli space with some, uh, with the following insertion of the, the characteristic classes associated to your choice of the homology classes. Okay, so this can be thought of as uh, the case theoretic uh, uplift of the bonus invariance of the Bowman. So now, from now, I'm going to uh, discuss how we actually uh, compute those observables. And here's uh, the summary of our approach to the computation of this partition function on uh, the m time vessel. So the first of all, what we are going to do is to reduce the 5 dn equals 1 theory uh, on S1, and which can be thought of as an effective 4D n equals 2 theory on M4. Uh, with infinitely many colors acquiring particles with the mass scale of roughly one over R. And uh, from here, once we obtained uh, the effective 40 N equals two series, we are going to follow uh, essentially the, the logic of uh, the, uh, the Moore and Witten where they computed the, uh, the homological version of the Donas invariant. So first of all, we use the topological invariance on M4 to scale the metric on M4 uh, as follow, which effectively reduced the theory to a low energy effective theory on a Coulomb branch of 40n equals to 2 theory. And this uh, Coulomb branch of 40n equals to 2 theory is described by uh, appropriate uh, cyborg written geometry of this effective theory. And then the computation of the partition function is reformulated in terms of the computation of the side of within invariant, which is uh, much more easier with some additional contribution from what we call the u Okay, So this is the, uh, the basic logic of the, uh, how we are going to compute this uh, observable. So before uh, we do that, let me uh, first try to briefly uh, summarize the, uh, the cyborg written geometry of this effective 40 n equals to two theory with infinitely many uh, KK modes. Uh, so the classical Coulomb branch of the effective 40 theory that came down from the 5 theory, 5D theory is parameterized by a complex scalar A, which is valued in infinitely long cylinder defined in the following way. And then the Coulomb branch effective theory is then determined by a multi-valued function called the prepotential that looks like this, where here uh, the lambda here, for example, is a dynamically generated scale of the 4D theory. This is in fact related to the 5D gauge coupling of this for young mill in the following way. And here I also introduced a dimensionless parameter, curly R, which is the, uh, the product of R times lambda, which can be identified as the instant counting parameter that we introduced before. And this prepotential F determines the gauge coupling of the effective 40 and equals to two theory. For example, tau is the gauge coupling for the effective theory, which can be computed from the second derivative of the prepotential as usual. And also there are many uh, BPS particles on the Coulomb branch. For example, uh, we have the uh, W boson, which uh, contributes to uh, the central charge A. And we also have magnetic string uh, wrapping S1, sorry, which contributes to uh, the central charge AD. 
And in, the, in addition to that, we have in 5D, uh, uh, they have the instanton particles whose mass is given by uh, this expression and also the color decline particles whose mass uh, is given by the one over R. Okay. So for example, in the limit where we take R goes to uh, strictly to zero, uh, in that case, we uh, these two uh, particles become infinitely massive and decouple from the spectrum and we recover the original spectrum of the, 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 the pure body n equals to two super young means here. Okay. Um, and the other parameter of the quantum corrected Coulomb branch uh, is nothing but the vacuum expectation value of the fundamental Wilson loop along the, uh, the circle S1, okay, that we will call uh, uh, by this, uh, this letter uh, U here. And what we call the cyborg written curve is a family of elliptic curve, which is parameterized by this U, uh, this complex number U, sorry. Uh, which can be written, uh, expressed in terms of uh, those, those equations. And as usual, variable A and AD can be written as a period integral of uh, some cyborg with one form, uh, lambda. Uh, and the cyborg with geometry can be understood as an elliptic vibration over uh, what we can call the U plane. Uh, for the generic value of this radius R, uh, this U plane is parameterized by, of course, this uh, complex number U, but with four singularities here, where this elliptic curves become uh, singular. And here is the point uh, where uh, one of the BPS particles that I just mentioned become massless. Okay. So for example, in the limit, R goes to zero, uh, these two singularities, U3 and U4, uh, become, in, uh, uh, become something that is associated to the infinitely massive uh, particles. So they actually uh, pull the way to the infinity and we recover the original, the small U plane in U plane uh, geometry of the 40 N equals to two pure super young series. And then this structure uh, has been also thoroughly uh, studied in recent uh, paper here as well. Um, and from the data of the cyborg written uh, geometry, we can write down the relation between uh, this complex number U and the modular parameter tau, which can be written in terms of this nice modular functions. Uh, in particular, you can uh, see from, you can argue from this structure that the, uh, the fundamental domain FR of uh, this, uh, uh, of this value theory is in fact a double copy of the upper half plane mode gamma zero four of the 4D and equals to pure for young means theory. So this uh, structure is uh, the most uh, simplest uh, in the case where R equals to one, in case you can uh, directly check that this u of tau is a modular invariant function for a congruent subgroup gamma zero of a, and therefore you can identify the fundamental domain as a, uh, the, the upper half plane mode gamma zero of a. Okay. And for generic R, its situation is slightly more complicated, uh, but you have the, essentially the same structure, but in addition to that, you can argue that there is a branch point because of this square root, at uh, the interior of uh, this fundamental domain whose position depends on R. Okay. So this structure is uh, uh, similar to what uh, you can obtain from the, um, the fundamental domain of the 4D N equals to two series with matter, which is recently considered in this way. So now we can uh, talk about uh, the, the U-plane integral. So following the work of the Muller and Witten, the partition function of the effective body theory that we just uh, tried to describe can be written in general in the following way. So here, this quantity phi is uh, the so-called the U-plane integral contribution. And in addition to that, we have four, uh, for four uh, singular point where this new degrees of freedom uh, emerges we have uh, the contribution from uh, what we call the cyborg written uh, contribution. Okay. And this structure depends uh, very much on the beta plus of four manifolds. 
for example, when P2 plus is larger than one, you can argue that this partition function is completely independent of the choice of metric on M4. And also for P2 plus is larger than one, the contribution from the Euclidean integral identically vanishes. But uh, for P2 plus is equal to one, the, uh, the partition function depends on the metric and also there is a non-trivial contribution from the Euclidean integral. But the dependence, of, dependence on the metric comes through the choice of J, which is a unique element in uh, the second cohomology class that satisfies this uh, condition here, which is sometimes called the, uh, the period point. Uh, so as I mentioned, for B2 plus is equal to one, the partition function uh, is a piecewise constant function of J and it uh, undergoes the word crossing if you uh, cross a certain codimension word, one word in the, in the space of the uh, metric. Uh, and you can argue that if you look at this Euclidean integral contribution, you can argue that the dependence on metric, the word crossing piece uh, can be uh, understood as a contribution from the control integrals around the singularities in the U plane. So these are uh, the singularities in the strong coupling uh, reason. And also there is also uh, possibly a contribution from the uh, singularity at infinity. Uh, and you can argue that the metric dependence around this, this uh, string, strong coupling singularities uh, precisely cancels that of uh, the, the work costing contribution of the cyborg written contribution at the four singular point, which means that the work costing of this entire partition function only comes from the control integral at uh, around the u goes to infinity. Okay. So this may sound like uh, uh, some technical details, but this actually leads to a very uh, powerful result because we can uh, essentially utilize uh, this fact to compute the partition function um, set uh, for entire class of manifold with speed to uh, larger than one. Okay. So I'm going to briefly comment on the result for the B2 plus larger than one, but in this talk, we will mainly focus on B2 plus is equal to one. Um, so uh, we go to the, uh, the Coulomb branch to, uh, to describe uh, the partition function computation. And uh, the effective theory on a Coulomb branch can be thought of as the n equals two U1G times U1I theory, where this U1G is this dynamical uh, uh, gauge group, and U1I is this background, uh, the symmetry that I uh, uh, explained in the beginning. And when B2 plus is equal to one, uh, you can argue that the only the zero mode contributes to uh, the U plane integral. And then the Coulomb branch effective action restricted to zero mode can be written in the following form, where tau's are uh, various couplings. For example, the tau one one here, when A, B are both, both one, this is just the tau of uh, the gauge coupling associated with the U1 uh, uh, gauge group in the Coulomb branch theory. And for example, V uh, is uh, the coupling that is associated to the coupling between these two uh, gauge groups. And we also define Kasai as a second derivative of prepotential with respect to MI, where MI is nothing but the mass parameter associated to the C1I theory. Okay. So this is the general structure. And you can uh, perform the integration. Sorry. You can perform the integration over the zero mode of this uh, auxiliary field, as well as the fermion zero modes. And you can also sum over the gauge fluxes. We arrive at the following. Uh, finite dimensional uh, integral. This integral is over uh, at the moment uh, over the uh, the a and a bar. Here, uh, a and b are a and b here are some uh, gravitational coupling that depends on the uh, that takes in, into account uh, the coupling to the chi uh, the Euler characteristic and signature sigma. And in addition, we have uh, c, which is essentially this coupling. Uh, this takes into account uh, the fact that there is some non-trivial contact term in the uh, IR uh, when you have this uh, codimension two defect, which is specified by this uh, this class NI that I just uh, discussed before. Okay. Here, psi mu is the sum over fluxes that can be written in the following way as a function of the Q and Q bar 
where Q and Q, Q is uh, nothing but exponential of the gate coupling that I just uh, described. Uh, from this structure, you can find you can uh, find that it's actually more natural to change the variable to tau, and the integral is now over the fundamental domain of uh, this tau that I called f r. And here, uh, integrand is now a very nice function uh, in terms of uh, the Q series, and various couplings that appears in the uh, integrand uh, can be obtained from the cyborg within geometry. For example, if we here, the coupling that I introduced here, we uh, can be thought of as um, uh, the solution to this nice, uh, the elliptic equations, and the C can be obtained in a similar way. And you can, using those uh, structure, you can write the integral in the nice uh, Q series. And one remark here is that, uh, it's highly non-trivial that the integral here that I discussed here, uh, a single value uh, around the various monodromies in the U plane around the uh, the strong coupling singularities. Okay, because there could be an non-trivial uh, choice of the duality frame. Uh, in principle, this integral can depend on uh, those uh, uh, those monodromies, but uh, you can show that uh, it's actually at the single value. And uh, in establishing the single valued means, a proper choice of the Q exact term uh, in this action uh, was, uh, was crucial. And finally, this condition, uh, which is a requirement that this, uh, the, the integral is single valued, uh, determines the further quantization condition for the background flux Ni that I just uh, described. Uh, now we can describe uh, the work closing. Suppose that we have two period points, uh, J and J prime. Uh, and what's shown in uh, this paper uh, is that the, uh, the, the difference between the integral evaluated at J and J prime can be written in terms of the total derivative of some non-holomorphic function that I wrote here, where this E is nothing but the error function, which is evaluated as some quantity that depends on J and J prime. Um, and using this structure, we can show that by uh, integration by parts, we can show that the metric dependence of the partition function is determined by the contribution from the boundary of this fundamental domain that tau goes to I infinity, so that you can write the partition function in the following. Uh, from this, we can write down uh, the work causing formula in terms of the uh, uh, dispersion in the curly bracket which is a nice Q series, and you take some constant term uh, out of this Q series, which is summed over some subset of fluxes, which is uh, determined uh, by the choice of your metric uh, J in J. Okay. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the, the actual evaluation of this expression. There are two ways to evaluate this expression. So first of all, this integral here depends on Q and also it depends on R here, which is the radius times the uh, lambda that dynamically generates this scale. And the first uh, the way is to, you can try to expand the integral in small r first and evaluate the Q to the zero term, okay? If you do that, you can show that this procedure reproduces the formula of Ketch and Kajima Yoshioka that I just explained in the beginning of the talk. For example, uh, for the case where M4 is Q2, uh, you can compute the partition function based on a line of argument. Uh, 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 first of all, you can blow up and uh, you can argue uh, by the existence of vanishing chamber, you can compute the partition function uh, on uh, the Q2, which can be written uh, in the following. Uh, nice way. So for example, one thing I want to uh, uh, the, mention here is that there is some nice uh, uh, duality, for example, uh, or symmetry along this diagonal line. For example, there are certain uh, dualities here that we can observe, which is which roughly speaking exchanges the instant the number and the flux uh, in the uh, flux that corresponds to the choice of the transcendence level. 
and it'd be interesting to see uh, if there is any physical interpretation of uh, this sort of the theory. Um, anyhow, uh, this expression agrees with the interpretation, uh, geometric interpretation as follows, which is the generating function of the holomorphic Euler characteristic with the moduli space valued in a certain line bundle. For example, uh, this, uh, this expression, you can see that it's bounded below and it only actually contains a positive polygon uh, R. Uh, however, in the five dimensional theory point of view, it's uh, actually slightly more natural to keep the radius finite rather than um, expanding in small r and expand the integrand in small q first and take the q to the zero term. Okay. Surprisingly, we find that these two uh, order of limits uh, do not commute, and we find that the result doesn't agree with the first approach. And in particular, uh, for b2 plus is equal to one. The result of the U-plane integral contains, it seems that it contains arbitrary negative powers of R, uh, which raises a question. How do we uh, interpret the meaning of the R inverse dependence? Because it seems like it spoils the interpretation of the partition function as a generating function of the holomorphic Euler characteristic. And this is currently uh, the, the question that we don't have a proper answer yet. Uh, we are trying to um, uh, look at various possible directions. For example, could there uh, exist another branch in SU2 uh, gauge theory that can possibly cancel this R inverse dependence? Or could there be uh, some subtleties in the UV completion of this 5D gauge theory? These are some of the directions that we are trying to explore, but we don't have a complete understanding of this R inverse dependence yet. Um, uh, let me move on to uh, some uh, other uh, point of view of this computation. As I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, there is an alternative pass integral derivation when M4 admit a tor uh, admits a, a toric action. So for example, the P2 is the simplest example of the toric form manifold. In this case, uh, the partition function can be computed from the perspective of the instant counting of the SU2 gaze theory, which is in fact the approach adopted by many authors, including uh, all these papers that I uh, mentioned. Um, and what's interesting is that for the tor toric manifold, we always have P2 plus is equal to one. Uh, so therefore the partition function can undergo a work of The Q fixed point uh, equations for this SU2 gauge theory can be written uh, in the following way. And when sigma is non-zero, uh, you can argue from this equation here, the gauge bundle splits into the sum of the line bundles and uh, the moduli space in fact reduces to the product of abelian instantons N, which can be described uh, in terms of a product of the Hilbert scheme of points on N. Uh, the pass integral, if you try to compute the pass integral of this SU2 gauge theory, you can show that this pass integral reduces to a finite dimensional integral over zero mode of effective 1D n equals two vector mode. But in this case, we always have the, uh, the, um, the, the uh, M4 is always a Kähler. So we have additional set of uh, supersymmetry. So we have a one equal, 1D n equals two, uh, the supersymmetry theory. And then the integral reduces to the zero mode of the uh, n equals two vector multiplet of 1D theory. Here A is again the uh, complex uh, scalar field valued in this infinitely long cylinder that I just, that I introduced um, before. And importantly, we also uh, turn on uh, some auxiliary field that corresponds to the, uh, the, the auxiliary field in 1D vector multiplet. And as in the U-plane integral story, we also have some of our abelianized flux that I will denote by case. And this is a formula that supersymmetric localization process gives you. So for example, it can be written as a, a integral over the zero mode. Uh, and this is uh, integrand, which can be thought of as a summing over all the contribution from the massive uh, modes in the theory on the spectrum. And by the uh, supersymmetry algebra, you can argue that this can be written in terms of the integral over the total derivative of some expression in A bar. 
And you can further argue uh, that uh, by properly uh, evaluating this integral over the auxiliary field, you can argue that this expression can be written in terms of the control integral of some metamorphic functions. But now you only have a, a dependence and a bar dependence and h dependence or uh, uh, disappears. And in particular, the dependence on the metric is now encoded in the choice of the contour C, which is determined by choice of the metric on N4. Okay. So before we talk about the contour, we can first talk about what uh, the integrand here is. Uh, and you can argue that uh, the, the integrand here is essentially the product of the k-theoretic necklace of partition function uh, localized at each fixed point uh, on M4. So for example, the toric action on M4 in this is the C star squared action on the moduli space N that I just described. And then uh, you can argue that the path integral of the gauge theory now localized to the fixed point of this toric action that I you know by N of T. And for the SU2 gauge theory, the fixed loci are labeled by fixed loci are labeled by the two chi tuples of Young tableau, where chi is the uh, the Euler character of uh, Euler number of the, the four manifold M4, which is also the number of fixed points uh, of uh, on, on M4 of the historic action. And it's non-trivial, but you can show that the integrand can be written in terms of the product of the k-theoretic necklace of partition function, which is defined on S1 times C2, uh, localized at uh, each i fixed uh, locus on, on four manifold. Okay. Um, so each of those factors uh, can be written in terms of the free potential in the non-equivalent limit, which is essentially the necklace of conjecture, which tells us that uh, in the limit epsilon one, epsilon two goes to zero. Uh, this has uh, the singular uh, behavior, uh, which can be written in the following expression. Okay. However, summing over the contribution from all the fixed loci, we obtain a finite non-equivalent limit. And the result is some expression that you can write in terms of the couplings that I, I introduced uh, in the discussion of the U-plane integral. So that's the integrand, and we can go back to uh, the our the control integral formula here, uh, just to discuss uh, the dependence of the choice of the, the contour uh, on a metric. So, for example, this is the uh, type of the uh, the formula that we obtain from the supersymmetric localization, and from here, uh, by evaluating this H integral, the auxiliary field integral, in a careful way, you obtain a uh, some contour that depends on, on the metric. And from this discussion, um, you can uh, expect uh, that this contour C, the choice of this contour C depends on the details of the function set, especially on its H dependence and non-holomorphic dependence in A bar. Okay. So this is a question about the recovering the non-holomorphic dependence and the H, the auxiliary field dependence of the k-theoretic necklace of partition function, which is uh, in general very difficult because it gets contribution from all the non bts modes. Okay. Now, however, you can uh, uh, use the fact that d2 plus is equal to one, and you can uh, argue that the, uh, this, uh, this, the factor here that appears uh, up here uh, can be written in the following way. And the, the, you can recover the dependence on H, which can be precisely written in the following way in the non-equivalent non limit um, of the partition function. Yes. And this factor is nothing but the same, uh, the product of the necklace of a case theoretic necklace of partition function uh, that I just discussed. Uh, as I mentioned, the metric dependence is uh, encoded in the contour at large A reason. Uh, as in the U-plane integral story. Uh, and uh, on uh, that large A contour, you can evaluate the H integral that I just uh, discussed, which gives you the error function, which is the same error function that appears in the U-plane integral story. This gives you the work crossing formula 
in terms of the control integral at infinity, where this uh, the, uh, the flux sum is over the, uh, the same set of the fluxes uh, that was introduced uh, in the result of the u plane integral story. Uh, and you can show that these two uh, very different looking expressions that you obtain from the, uh, the, the supersymmetric localization and also from the U-plane integral approach um, agrees in a very non-trivial way. So for example, in the uh, non-equivalent limit, uh, you can write the integrand of your, uh, uh, the integrand in the super, that you obtained in the supersymmetric localization in a following way. And you can change the variable from A to Q using the data of the pre-potential. And you can write the work of seeing uh, in the following way, for example, in terms of the residue integral uh, at Q. And this can be, uh, you can show that uh, uh, reduce it to uh, something that is precisely that you obtain from the U-plane integral analysis. Okay. So from, from this argument, we can show that uh, these two uh, very non-trivial uh, computation, uh, it gives you the same answer. Okay, so uh, I will briefly mention generalization to be two plus uh, larger than one. Uh, as I mentioned, the general structure of the partition function can be written in the following way. Uh, and also I mentioned that for B2 plus is equal to one, these two factors are both non-zero. And in particular, the word crossing of this factor and word crossing of this factor around the strong coupling singularities cancels like this, so that the only the, uh, the integral at infinity contributes to the word crossing. And you can uh, actually make use of this fact to deduce the, uh, deduce the, uh, the contribution from the Seibok-Mitten contribution at those strong coupling points uh, for uh, arbitrary uh, B2 uh, plus positive, uh, B2 plus positive case using the topological invariance of, uh, using the topological uh, nature of this partition function. Okay. From that, because of the fact that we don't have a U plane integral contribution, you can write down the partition function for the entire class of B2 plus larger than one. And we find that uh, this result, I didn't write down the explicit result here, but we find that the result, we produced the result of Getschek-Williams, uh, which was obtained a few years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the conclusion. Um, so here's a brief summary of what I just um, talked about. Um, so I mentioned, uh, I introduced the topological correlators of the 5D n equals one SU2 gaze theory which geometrically computes the case theoretic donuts invariant, which can be roughly speaking written in terms of the following way. And in particular, we derive the metric dependence of this partition function for B2 plus is equal to one in the perspective of the, the U-plane integral and also uh, in the perspective of SU2 gauge theory uh, uh, point of view. And we show that uh, these two approach agrees in a very non-trivial way. And also I briefly mentioned the generalization to B2 plus is uh, larger than one, uh, which we produce as a result of uh, this paper. So here are some uh, future directions that we have been thinking. Uh, first of all, it would be of course uh, interesting to extend to what uh, people call the general rank one EN type theories. And also it would be interesting to uh, extend the result to the 5D n equals one star theory. Um, which uh, is expected to compute the chi y genus associated to the moduli space of instantons. And we can also try to use this result uh, using the KK symmetry uh, that I didn't mention uh, very much in this talk uh, to generalize this computation for more general five dimensional manifold, which can be thought of as uh, the S1 bundle over the, uh, over the, over the full manifold, for example, the S5. Uh, could be uh, the simplest example of such class of theory. And it would be also interesting to uplift uh, what we have just done to the 60 n equals to 1,0 gauge series so that we can obtain 
a class of elliptic genus that is labeled by uh, four manifold, and also the extension to the, the B1 positive and the dimensional reduction, uh, for example, the lower dimensional 3D uh, theories will be interesting. And also, as I mentioned, uh, it would be interesting to uh, try to understand the uh, uh, geometric interpretation of more uh, general topological defects that you can consider in this construction. Okay, yeah, this is all I wanted to say today. Thanks. Great, uh, let's uh, thank the speaker. And uh, so I think we have time for some questions. Anyone have a question? Maybe I can start out. So um, when you were talking uh, about the cyborg witten computation, the, the integral in the U-plane, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a couple of subtleties about the single valuedness of the integrand. So right. you said that, uh, that that leads to some quantization condition on your uh, uh, on your NIs, right? So is that a condition that you sort of couldn't see otherwise? That wasn't obvious from the UV description of that operator? Yeah, so that that's actually a very good question. So, uh, we don't uh, have a proper understanding yet. Uh, it might imply existence of some sort of uh, the anomaly or mixed anomaly that is present in this theory. Uh, yeah, I think this is something, some question that we should definitely understand better. Yeah, there should be some physical ex, uh, explanation of why this, the, the quantization of N should be restricted to this particular value. Yeah, it's I, a good question. I point. think it might have to do with the moduli space of instantons not being spin. Yeah, it might be the, it might be the case, I think, yes. Yeah, so that, that was another thing I was wondering about was how to interpret yeah how to interpret that problem. I think uh, yes. two things yeah. are connected, Andy. Yeah, so for example, in the presence of this non-trivial flux, and I, I mentioned in, for example, uh, yeah, in this slide, uh, it can be thought of this, for example, the quantum mechanics is not the state of sections of S times some new line bundle Li. So you can uh, think of uh, as a coupling to some non-trivial the, the connection so that uh, this, this section is well-defined. Uh, yeah, in that case. So. Oh, so you're saying when it's not spin, then the theory is only well defined in the presence of uh, one of these uh, surface. Yeah, yeah, coupling to the yeah. That I think that could be one possible explanation. I see. Is it then possible that it's spin C instead of spin? Because that yeah, that was yeah, that was what I was yeah, that that was what I was had yeah, yeah. what I had in mind. Yes. Yeah. And there was something else actually on the same slide. You said that um, in order to see the single valuedness, you had to choose the Q bar exact terms somehow carefully. Can, can, mm -hmm. you, say, can you say something more about that? Um, well, yeah. Um, uh, for example, those uh, the 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 integrand uh, de depend. As you can see, that it depends very much on. It's it's not really the. The, uh, the holomorphic part uh, in terms of the tau or A. So it, it, uh, it depends on all this tau bar and for example, in terms of A, A bar uh, uh, that usually comes in as a Q uh, exact miss, uh, uh, Q exact part of the, uh, the, the computation. But uh, having those uh, explicit, uh, having those particular dependence on tau bar, for example, like in this uh, expression here, uh, like in this expression here, it's crucial to to ensure all those uh, single valuedness, uh, for example. So you cannot, for example, just drop this Q bar term, which is can be thought of as some, in, in some sense the Q is a uh, part of the action. And having all those terms uh, can be thought of as defining the proper Q is uh, terms in the action, which was crucial in yeah establishing the single valuedness and also the well defining of the this system. I see. Thanks. Uh, are there other questions? Yeah, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, uh, thanks again for the nice talk. Um, I had a 
well, two things actually, just about the, what you just said. Uh, is it some sort of then, uh, I mean, the fact that, you know, naively you would, I was also puzzled by that, like often happens. So you fix some cube R to get some properties, but in principle, I mean, mm -hmm. nothing should depend on Q exact terms. So it is some sort of uh, some uh, holomorphic anomaly type that's some term done decoupled for some reason. No? Yeah, so the part of the reason is that we are interesting, interested in uh, this workhorsing part of uh, this partition function. So in general, uh, the workhorsing can be thought of as uh, coming from some Q anomalies of, of the theory. So uh, the orders, uh, the, the Q exact terms, uh, actually come in in the in the in the in the discussion of the properly uh, deriving this work hosting uh, phenomena. So yeah, so in that sense, um, yeah, this the, the yeah, that could be the, the, the answer. I'm not sure if it answered yeah. the question. Yeah. I see. No, I think. And uh, about the you had the thing when you mentioned some sort of symmetry, right? On the, when you expanded in n and in 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 r. Mm -hmm. um, and you also said, yeah. So is it? I mean, my guess it would be related to the the extent, the you know the like. So from the point of view of the of the five D SPFT, mm -hmm. uh, there is a N and SU two symmetry, right? Which is explicitly broken when you turn on R, your R different from one. Mm -hmm. And and then the you have different four D limits where I mean uh, in terms well five D gets your limits when you expand mm -hmm. that small R or you can also expand that large R, but I just uh, like a, the UV dual different as you to mm -hmm. get your description. Mm -hmm. So could, could it be in that case, I'm not quite sure N what it was, but could it be that it's precisely this sort of SU2 and N symmetry that uh, exchanges the, those uh, kind of Gopaku Marvafa type invariants here? Um, um, those, yeah, those, those uh, integers? It's not, yeah, it's not clear to me whether this is really that, because I thought that this that symmetry uh, will come in as uh, invariance in exchanging R to the R inverse, as you just explained. So yeah. this symmetry looks like it's slightly different from what you just mentioned. But yeah, it, of course, uh, this symmetry will, I think, change to something different when you turn on N. So in, yeah, yeah, it will be eventually, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not sure. And it's not clear. Yeah, immediately that this comes from such a symmetry. But yeah, I think. But N was a flux for the topological symmetry. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. For example, I, I I'm not sure how uh to the the how the duality maps this the flux N to to be for example accord the dual uh the theory. Yeah. If yeah, I think we need to understand this this better. But yeah. Yeah, for example, we are yes. not actually sure whether this symmetry would present in in in, in other like uh, 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 the on, on other four manifold. This is something that mm -hmm. we have to check before we uh, talk about the the physical meaning of this this, this sort of duality. Yeah. Thanks. And can, can you say again what was the what was the theorem of Gucci, Cool, and Williams that you that you uh, reproduced. Uh, it's the it's just the computation of uh, the scale theoretic Grunas invariant for uh, general general algebraic uh, surfaces. So we 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 can reproduce uh, the the rejoic, the quantity. Ah, for algebraic, I see, I see. So not yeah. like not the equivalence between. Not just the work hosting, but uh, the uh, the extra K theoretic Donas invariant itself for B two plus larger than one. Right. But what if I would just ask? Someone could ask, right? For B two plus bigger than one, mm -hmm. is there a known formula that expresses you know these K theoretic Donaldson invariants in terms of cyber wooden invariants? Yeah, yeah, that's precisely the what uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, the contents of the the Getche uh, cool Williams. That's what they did, I see, but only for the algebraic, I see. Or, or they did it for every four manifold. Andy, it's, it's a sum over. Okay. Sum over. Can you still hear me? Now I can, for a minute I couldn't. Sorry, I, I think I can't hear anything. Oh. Sorry. Can you still hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I can I can hear something now. Yes. Oh, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I had a problem with my my AirPod. Yeah. Was there any more questions? Hey, Andy, if I could comment. Um, the 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 gotcha cool Williams formula is a sum over Zyberg Witten classes of the Zy uh, sorry, uh, yes, a sum over Zyberg Witten classes of the Zyberg Witten invariant times a certain rational function of curly R. So, but, but should I think of it as being like the K theory analog of, you know, the, whatever it was called, the, the, the magic formula that related? Yes, to yeah, the, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's um, what's called the Witten formula where you sum over uh, Cyberg Witten classes, Cyberg Witten invariant times, um, you know, something like the exponential of the class dot. Um, okay. dot, um, dot some fugacity. So it's just like that. So it's a it's a rational function of R raised to things like uh, n squared, where n is the n on the on slide. And that's exactly what comes in. I see. So um, I, I actually, Kian, maybe you could say a word about um, the relation of the contours CK that you had to um, the Jeffrey Kerwan prescription. Uh, well, yeah. So. The original, uh, originally, I uh, we thought that, for example, uh, I think he was asking about this this this, this choice of the contour CJ, uh, okay. because of the structure of the one D n equals to uh, quantum mechanics by some uh, some general argument, um, you expect that this contour uh, can be identified with what's called the Jeffrey Cohen. Uh, range two integrals that uh, frequently appear in the theories with one one d n equals to two uh, supersymmetry or two d uh, uh, the n equals to two supersymmetry, uh, but in this case um, it's uh, similar to to those construction. But there is an important subtlety here that uh, there is a uh, uh, singularity called a uh, non called a uh, non projective. Uh, course uh, that we that is actually important in uh, in this description here so that that uh, construction is not valid here so the uh, um, so this is the reason that we uh, had to focus on the integral uh, at the large a region where we just focus on the focus on the the work crossing of these invariant and was not able to uh, compute the 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 full uh, the partition function uh, the uh, in terms of some some choice of the contour integral of um, yeah of this of, of this partition function expression yeah yeah but it would be interesting to 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 yeah to see how those Jeffrey Cohen uh, residue integral expression is extended uh, to to our cases and write down some uh, general expression for the partition function but not just the work crossing part. In this in this perspective, um, as well, um, yeah. But this is uh, sort of uh, something that um, has not been uh, done yet. In in the UV, uh, so uh, as you know very well, in the in the Gifredic description of like the elliptic genus or quantum mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. There, uh, uh, you would have a very clear uh, meaning to the singularities on the U plane or like the A plane in this case here. Right. Uh, with like massless particles, and then you right. want to get a contour so that you don't have any tachyons essentially, right? Right. Uh, is there any similar understanding here of, you know, because here the integrand is a bunch of Necrasov partition function, or I mean, right. so something right. much more complicated, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you, yeah, you can think of this uh, integrand as um, uh, like a, some of the contribution from like bunch of 1D multiplet uh, fluctuation, like the Fermi multiplet and uh, effective Fermi multiplet and Kara multiplet. Fluctuation and those pores can be pores in this uh, equivariant. Uh, the the perspective can be thought of as the point where one of those uh, the chiral multiplet become masses and things like that. So uh, you can yeah you can um, consider it in a similar way. But there is an important pore here, uh, which is the point where this non-abelian gauge symmetry enhances, so that um, you cannot really um, the apply the the logic. Uh, of this this residue integral prescription anymore. So that's just a um, uh, maybe the technical subtleties uh, that um, uh, yeah that appears here. Yeah. 
But shouldn't those singularity be resolved like in Telavitan theory precisely by the old instanton somehow that? Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, interesting. Yeah, to 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 see if that if that works. It's, it's yeah, it's a bit similar to what happens in the in the three D uh, or two D cases in the higher genus where you have uh, this singularity where this W boson become masses, and so uh, you cannot really you have to to uh, to to you, you need some uh, the extra input. Uh, just to, to, to know how to deal with those singularities. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, if there are no further questions, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. And let's see. So, so this was actually the last colloquium of the current uh, the current sequence, and then so we'll take a break over the summer, and we will resume again. And our first speaker will be our first colloquium uh, after the break will be August 29th, and we'll have Edward Witten speaking. And so I hope you all will join us then. So long. I'll stop the recording. All right, thanks a lot. Thank um, you. Very nice.